lost all hope of that uh, probably seven, eight months ago now, quite candidly. It's amazing to me that anybody's still having a discussion about having some sort of an intervention or bringing him back on message. I think, as Errol just said, this is his message. His message is being a loud-mouthed basically. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we had to bleep out the last word, but uh, suffice it to say, um, the person she's, or the name she's referring to is associated with Jane. Uh, joining us now, and, and by the way, as I pointed out earlier, she did so well by calling Donald Trump that name in that show that they kept her around to go on the Don Lemon show afterward because this is CNN. Uh, Wayne Allen Root, former libertarian vice presidential nominee, syndicated columnist, Trump supporter, and author of a book that it, I, I can't tell you how long I've been waiting for a book like this, Angry White Male, How the Donald Trump Phenomenon is Changing America and What We Can All Do to Save the Middle Class. Wayne, congratulations on the book. I want to get to that in a second. You know, that woman, Liz Mayer, is the spokesman for the libertarian ticket, of which you were once the, the number two on the ticket. What do you think of uh, her little uh, performance? Well, you'll notice I'm not with the Libertarian Party anymore. I ran back to the Republican Party. You know, if people knew what the Libertarian ticket and the, and the candidates really stood for, nobody would vote for them. And that's the thing. Nobody knows. You know Donald. You know Hillary. You're familiar with them. But you don't know a thing about Gary Johnson. If you knew that the Libertarian Party stood for open borders, allowing everyone in the world into America to fill the nation, bankrupt the nation, get everyone on welfare, and make the government so big that you'll never see an end of it. If people knew that, there isn't one conservative leaner in America that would even be thinking of voting for the libertarian ticket. If you knew the ticket hated Israel and libertarians wave Palestinian flags and can't stand anything Israel stands for, you'd run away from the libertarian party. Not one Christian would consider them. Glenn Beck wouldn't consider them. But they don't know anything about them, so they're using them as a proxy to say never Trump. But they're voting for people that are far worse than Donald Trump when it comes to matching up on their views. And I'm going to make sure between now and November, the whole world knows what Gary Johnson and the Libertarian Ticket really stands for. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, your book, Angry White Male, um, you know, it's become a pejorative to, uh, to be called a, 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 a white male. Um, if you're a white male, there's something wrong with you. If you're a white male, you're automatically angry. And if you're a white male, you're a racist, you're a homophobe, you're a xenophobe, the whole thing. Uh, it happens every day in the media. Uh, it, it happens every day on college campuses. Uh, and yet you, uh, you're, 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 you're taking it on head on. And, I, and I'm very pleased uh, for that. Talk about uh, some of the things that you address uh, in the book and why, why you wrote it. Well, I guess I'm loud and I'm proud like the gays. I'm a soccer mom like suburban women. I believe what I believe and I'm proud to believe in it. I believe in and was raised by two great parents. Believe it or not, I actually had a mom and a dad. I'm a son of a butcher, an SOB. And they were all American parents. And they had me believe in God, country, family, marriage, American exceptionalism, the US Constitution, small business, the military and the police. Those are the things I believe in, and it's no coincidence, Steve, they're all under massive attack. Obama said he wanted to fundamentally change the greatest nation in world history with the greatest middle class, and every middle class kid I know was raised with the same beliefs as me, and they're under attack. So we've gotta be the soccer moms of this election and stand up for ourselves and vote in mass, and who agrees with me? leftist filmmaker Michael Moore, who said last week on Bill Maher's HBO show, Trump will win the election because of 40 million motivated angry white males. Well, I'm speaking for those angry white males, and we're going to take this nation back. And Susan Sarandon, uh, not, that I'm, uh, not that I'm a fan of hers, not that I like the second part of this statement I'm going to give you, but she said that Hillary is much more dangerous, and I'm paraphrasing, than Donald Trump uh, 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 could ever be. Well, she is more dangerous for one reason. Let's get away from all the politics. Let's just talk about the reality of living day to day. No matter where you stand at abortion or gay marriage or anything in this world, you need a job. You need an income. You can't live on food stamps and welfare for life. And a country can't give everyone food stamps and welfare. Someone's got to work. And I'm telling you as a small businessman, okay, I'm pleading with America. If you want business to exist, 
you've got to elect Donald Trump. We can't take another third term of Barack Obama because today it was just announced that factory orders were down for the 20th straight month. Last week it was announced GDP, gross domestic product, the only measurement of the economy, Steve, 1.2 percent. Obama's now going to be in this eighth year of his presidency. It'll finish at about 1.5 percent for the year. He's going to be the only president in the history of America to have ever presided over eight straight yep. years of GDP under 3%. You never hear that on the news. Yep. It's a nightmare out there. If we don't let Trump, business as we know it will cease to exist. You're, uh, you're absolutely right. Wayne, I know we're going to be talking to you a couple of times a week uh, going forward between now and the election. Again, the book, folks, uh, there it is, Angry White Male, How the Donald Trump Phenomenon is Changing America and What We Can All Do to Save the Middle Class. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Steve. God bless. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to move on. I want to uh, clear up some things. I want you to hear more from Louis Dorfman. He's the guy who gave the Purple Heart to Donald Trump. And we heard one soundbite uh, from him uh, talking about how uh, he didn't think Trump meant anything bad when he said, I always wanted a Purple Heart, now I got it the easy way. I want you to hear what else the man who says he has no regrets about giving Donald Trump that Purple Heart had to say. It was it's been taken out of context of what he said because they're not showing the before and the after they're just showing what he said and you know because he had told me backstage how much of an honor it was and he really asked me you know do you want to give me this or do you want it back do you want me to give it back to you on stage he asked me he said do you want to say a few words and i said you know I, no, I don't want to say anything because you just keep on saying what you're saying, and, and I, I think that would be the best thing. Yep. Okay, and one more. I just think he would make a good commander-in-chief. I mean, I like, I like what he says. I like, you know, um, I just like his position so on now, many, many different stories. Any regrets? Handing no, not at all. Not at all. I'm very, I was very proud to give him that medal, not just for myself. This isn't about me. This is about all the veterans that are um, carrying the wounds and of these wars that we're in and past wars. Yeah, you're not going to see uh, CNN interviewing him or replaying that because they don't care. Now, I just want to point something out. How many times have you heard Donald Trump, KKK, Donald Trump, David Duke, didn't denounce him, blah, 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 blah. All right? Need I point out to everybody, and I guess I do, that at Robert Byrd's memorial service, Robert Byrd, the former majority leader of the Senate, Democrat, uh, former KKK uh, organizer, Bill Clinton made an excuse for Robert Byrd and his KKK affiliation. Watch. There are a lot of people who wrote these eulogies for Senator Byrd in the newspapers, and I read a bunch of them, and they mentioned that he once had a fleeting association with a Ku Klux Klan, and what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. He was a country boy from the hills and hollows of West Virginia. He was trying to get elected. Oh, he was trying to get elected. So he became a KKK organizer. You know, why didn't I ever think of that? And that's okay, says Bill Clinton, the man who signed Confederate Flag Day into law, the man who says his mentor was uh, William Fulbright, a segregationist. Uh, if you're just trying to get elected, then you join the KKK if you have to. Oh, right. I know, Bill's not running for president. Kind of. Hillary is. Well, Hillary had some wonderful things to say about the man who belonged to the KKK also. Today, our country has lost a true American original, my friend and mentor, Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd was a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility. He was not just its longest serving member, he was its heart its soul, and its historian. From my first day in the Senate, I sought out his guidance, and he was always generous with his time and his wisdom. We will not see his like again. Yeah, you probably won't see his like again. A guy who was in the KKK and became the Democratic, 
the leader of the Senate, a Democratic leader of the Senate for decades, worshipped by Bill and Hillary Clinton, and they go after Donald Trump. Can you imagine if Donald Trump had eulogized and said that the, a KKK member was my mentor? That's what Hillary just said. He was my mentor. Remember the time on Fox he said the N-word, but he said they're a white N word. Remember that one? That's Hillary's mentor. Bill said he hadn't joined the KKK. He wanted to get elected. Why am not I not so open-minded? Hey, folks, coming up next, Larry Kudlow. Do not miss it.